Warrnambool, Victoria. Situated on the majestical and rugged coastline of Victoria's shipwreck coast, Warrnambool offers an abundance of natural beauty, great shopping and entertainment for all ages. Welcome to the 2013 Shipwreck Coast Classic. Today we have two races, one for the men and one for the women, 128 kilometres for each event. The men are going to have to back up today after yesterday's Melbourne to Warrnambool Cycling Classic. 256 kilometres yesterday, they're going to have sore legs to get underway today, a little bit adverse conditions, we're expecting rain and hail, we'll have to see how it pans out as the morning progresses. The riders to watch out for today, obviously the budget forecast team were very strong yesterday. However, there's one or two riders who didn't do too much yesterday and got a little bit unlucky towards the end. Brenton Jones from the Hue and Genesis team, he'll be looking for a good race today. Alex Ray, so close but so far yesterday, just missed out on the podium finish. How are the legs after yesterday's Melbourne to Warrnambool Cycling Classic? Yeah, to be honest, they're feeling pretty good today, but Shipwreck Coast, it's such an unpredictable race that you never know how anyone's feeling, and uh, you just got to wait until you get out there and see how it goes. And what does Brenton Jones need from this bike race to be crossing the line first here today? <laughs> More luck, I think. More luck today, and uh, all should be good. The race got underway at a cracking pace at kilometre zero. Joseph Cooper went straight out of the blocks to try and stir things up, and stir things up he did. There was very windy conditions out on the road today, and that has played havoc with the bunch. Right from the get-go, riders were trying to get a sit from the rider in front of them just to try and get some shelter from the conditions out here today. It has been extremely windy along the Great Ocean Coast Road here today. The rain came, we had thunder and lightning at one point, and it has totally set up how this race has panned out. 17 riders went off the front very early indeed, and they started working very well together. Drapet Professional Cycling Team once again well represented in this breakaway. You know, the wind was uh, a little bit strong. Um, I had good legs uh, today, and I think pretty much all the riders in the break had reasonable legs. We're all committed. We all were working together quite well, so yeah, we stayed away. As the riders raced along with the backdrop of the Great Ocean Road behind them, we saw 17 riders become 10 riders, and it was a role reversal today for the Melbourne to Warrnambool winner, Sam Horgan. Caught in the second group with his teammate, Jack Anderson, and a few of the Drapak posse making sure they didn't get across. The breakaway established itself. It hovered at around one minute for a very long time. In the end, it went out to five minutes and 10 seconds. And that is where the cat and mouse tactics started. Alexander Ray, Floris Goosenen, Will Walker, they were all very aggressive. Jake Kaufman, third yesterday, he was very aggressive as well. But it was little Alexander Ray who kept on attacking the front group. Towards the end, the last 30k, I sort of some of the guys started looking around at each other and I went and then it started everyone playing cat and mouse and just sort of pick my, pick my moves. It wasn't until later on that I was able to get away with Floris and it worked out well. One by one, the Drapak riders tried to minimise the damage that Alexander Ray was doing. However, it took Floris Goosenen, the only man who could stay with Ray, as they rolled into the finish. They turned left with a kilometre to go, a nasty little climb, and that is where Alexander Ray and Floris Goosenen started the cat and mouse tactics for the win. I saw going into the corner the wind was going to change, so I hit it into the corner and thought, why not go, for, go from here? And uh, I had Floris on my wheel, which helped. Um, meant the Drapek boys in the bunch didn't need to do anything, and yeah, I put my head down, and that was it. But Ray has been so aggressive over the last month. He took out the sprint finish in front of Coros Goosenen, and we had Jake Kaufman backing up his third from yesterday, taking third today in the shipwreck post -bus. Had a good race here last year, and so we made the break, and we all got rolling uh, pretty well. And then we just stuck to it and managed to stay away to the end. It was my last race of the season, so good to go, good to go out with a win.
the women's race this afternoon, we will see the battle recommence between Catherine Garfoot and Ruth Corset. The difference being is they now don't ride in the same team. Garfoot will be representing the VIS Jayco team today and Corset will be with her original team. There's going to be a lot of fireworks between these two girls during the women's race. Big race and the wind's really picked up. I think we're expecting up to 50k hour winds. Probably looking at a head cross on the way home. Um, We've got a strong battle going on between Ruth and Corset. It's getting to the point end of the um, series with I think only one or two points separating Ruth and Catchin. So obviously they're going to be fighting it out, um, which which will open up some good opportunities for other riders that are further down to um, probably get away in a break if they can. But it's going to be a real tough man's course, and I think the return league's really going to sort a lot of people out. And gauging by what happened in the men's, and they've they've got a field that was three times the size as what we have. I think there's going to be a lot of sore people at the end of the day. There's only 38 of us, so maybe we could all stick together and be friends, but um, I suspect that won't happen, and um, especially more on the return leg, and I know there's a lot of sprinters in there wanting to, to get up. This is, a, this, is a pretty, this is a pretty impressive race to win, so a lot will be going for that win. The first sprint out on the road was taken out by Pensa Racing's Nicole Whitburn. The second sprint of the day also went to Nicole Whitburn. Guess what? It's rained again here this afternoon in Warrnambool. The ladies were in worse conditions this afternoon than the men were this morning. It was absolutely horrendous along the Great Ocean Road, the wind gusting to 50 to 70 kilometres an hour at one point. The breakaway went just four kilometres into the race. Jessica Mundy, Nicole Whitburn, Emily Roper, Shannon Malseed and of course Christy Glover were the five riders who went up the road. Now those girls worked together straight away. They had the advantage of the tail wind just at the start and they were over 60 kilometres an hour. When they turned, the damage was done to the peloton. The breakaway had to fight against the crosswinds, but the bunch decided they weren't gonna fight today. They were quite happy to see the break go up the road. At one stage today, the breakaway got 11 and a half minutes. Back in the bunch, the tactics were playing out for the National Road Series lead. That lead between Katrin Garfoot and of course Ruth Corset has only got two points between it. Those two girls were quite happy to mark each other out. Towards the end of the bike race, we saw a lot of animation from the bicycle superstore rider in Flick Wardlaw, but it didn't have any effect on what was going to happen to the breakaway. It was horrible. <laughs> it was just, yeah, I think we were riding at 20 kilometres an hour for most of it into just block headwinds and yeah, luckily it didn't rain until later in the race, so that was nice, we stayed nice and warm, but yeah, I don't think I've ridden in conditions like that before. So five kilometres to go and we saw the five girls start the cat and mouse tactics. It was young Jessica Mundy from the VIS Jayco team launching attack after attack to try and unsettle the big sprinting powerhouse of Nicole Whitburn. It was to no avail, the girls came back together inside the last kilometre and Nicole Whitburn, after showing how strong she was in the first two sprints of the day, led her way across the line to win the Shipwreck Coast Classic for 2013. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised that we stayed away. I was just hoping to get to the first sprint and win that. But then the time gap just kept going out and out. And yeah, we just kind of kept riding and thinking we'd get caught in the end, but didn't. So it's fantastic for us. <laughs>